thank you very much for the introduction. a couple of things uh, that Martin mentioned, but I guess that cannot hurt. Um, maybe just to uh, reiterate again that classical biocontrol aims to control exotic pests with uh, co-evolved natural enemies or so-called biocontrol agents that are introduced from the origin of these inv invasive uh, species. And these biocontrol agents are typically insects, mites, or fungal pathogens. Um, as Martin already pointed out, there is two resources uh, that I would like to draw your attention to. The first one is the World Catalog of Agents and their Target Weeds, which is also available online. Uh, and the second one is this BioCat catalog um, that documents all deliberate introductions of um, biocontrol agents for the control of um, insect pests. And based on this data, 510 agents were released against 175 target weeds in 90 countries, while over 2,000 agents were released against 588 pest species in 148 countries. And the most active countries for both of the disciplines are Australia, Canada, and the US, um, then New Zealand, but and then also South Africa uh, for weeds, and in Europe, uh, Israel and Italy are very active in the release of um, insect biocontrol agents. Now, um, the, the most uh, frequent questions that we receive for classical biocontrol is what is about safety? What do the bugs eat once the pest is reduced or locally eliminated? And I'm not going to give an overview in the time available uh, of the safety testing that is behind the introductions, because that would be a one to two hour lecture in itself that takes 10 to 20, sometimes over 20 years before we even think about releasing these agents. I'm just going to present very high level, the very high level results. And for the good news is that the, the results look, um, look very positive for starting with weed biocontrol, less than 1% of weed biocontrol agents um, have uh, been shown uh, to, to, that might negatively affect non-target species at the population level. So I'm not talking about nibbling on individual plants, but really levels at the, at the population level. And there are no uh, documented cases at the moment where weed biocontrol agents led to the extinction of a native species, while there are several cases where the invasion of non-native plants threatened the existence of native species. And as you can see on the graph, um, the non-targeted tick is also uh, decreased over time considerably, and this is certainly because there is a lot of science now behind um, this method, and these methods have become more and more sophisticated over time, but also regulations have become stricter, so we also had to get better at predicting non-targeted tech. For uh, insect biocontrol, it can generally be said that the perception of risk is lower, and this is because, um, well, the non-target species of what we biocontrol uh, uh, can be economic species, uh, crops or ornamentals. This is not uh, usually the case for insect biocontrol. So they have been um, traditionally, agents have been released for insect biocontrol that were less specific. Nevertheless, only 0.34% of cases uh, have been documented where population reductions or other severe impacts were recorded. And similar to weed biocontrol, no cases were found where the introduction of um, agents for insect pests led to any extinctions. Good, so, um, but we don't only want these agents to be, to be safe, they should also effectively reduce the density, uh, vigor, and or spread of the uh, invasive. Starting again with weed biocontrol, before we can get an impact, these agents need to establish in the new range, and this is not always a, a trivial task. So for weed biocontrol, on average, if you look at the horizontal line, two-thirds of releases do establish, and this rate has again increased from less than 40% in the 1900s 
to over 80% nowadays. And in respect to impact, about 55% um, have led to uh, some level of impact. And when you look at the lower line, um, about a, a quarter uh, cause heavy impact where no other control measures are necessary anymore. Um, and across all countries and regions, about two-thirds of weeds targeted for biocontrol experience some level of control. These percentages are lower for insect biocontrol, where 33% of introductions led to establishment. And when you look again at the lower line, 10% um, resulted in satisfactory control against 30% of targeted pests. Um, However, when it does work, and Martin has also uh, shown already some of these cost-benefit analysis, these cost-benefit uh, ratios can be extremely high uh, and go up to 1,600, for instance, for cassava millibug or also for water lettuce in Sri Lanka. So that means for any dollar you invest, you would get up to $1,600 back, and that is, for instance, as Martin has shown, because you use uh, less uh, pesticides, less herbicides, um, or you, and or you have an increase in, in yield. But even biocontrol agents with only relatively low levels of, um, of effectiveness, of success, can still make a valuable contribution when you think of integrated control, because they would reduce um, the need for other control measures. So in the following, I would like to give two examples just to illustrate uh, a little bit the, the methodology and bring it to life. And the first one is the emerging success of the classical biocontrol of papaya millibug in East Africa. Papaya millibug is a very polyphagous insect pest that um, attacks a large number of tropical, subtropical fruits, vegetables, and ornamental plants. The, the pictures show the illustrated symptoms. It originates in Central America, was first reported in Western Africa in 2010. In 2016, it was found in the coastal areas of Kenya, and it has shown to lead to yield reductions in papaya of up to 90%, and economic losses of over 2,000 pounds per hectare for households annually, thereby uh, severely impacting and threatening the livelihoods of smallholder farmers. Control is difficult because of um, the cryptic habitat and protective waxy layer of uh, the Papabaya millibug. Smallholder farmers have uh, relied heavily on the use of highly hazardous pesticides for the control of this pest. Uh, they used up to 16 applications per season. So biological con control was identified as a valid alternative, especially uh, since a small parasitic wasp uh, originating from Central America, so again from the area of origin of the pest, was released in Western Africa in 2010 and has been found to be very effective. Um, about 83% uh, of uh, trees became free of the pest by 2015 in Western Africa. And uh, so Kebi was involved in introducing, importing this small parasitoid from Ghana to East Africa in 2020. And to cut a longer story short, at the moment, um, the impact looks um, is tremendous. In Kenya, the spread has been detected of this um, small parasitoid at least 300 kilometers away from release sites within three years. Parasitism rates um, amount to up, up to 72 percent, and in a survey, nearly 85 percent of farmers view the release of this biocontrol agent as very positive. So in Kenya and Uganda, at this point in time, the pest is, is, can be regarded as managed, and it has, less, it, has, it has led to a significant decrease in the use of pesticides and an increase in yield. And we will for sure conduct a cost-benefit analysis in the near future of this example. The second example um, is the um, classical control of a plant, purple loose stripe, uh, originating in Europe, introduced to North America as an ornamental because of its nice showy flowers. 
um, and it has become uh, a weed not only in an environmental setting, but it can also have economic impacts. First of all, it outcompetes native vegetation, it reduces uh, wetland plant diversity, it also reduces the breeding habitat of many species of native birds. It also alters the timing of litter input, alters the soil nitrogen cycling. Uh, when blue stripe grows in wetland pastures, it, redu it reduces the livestock um, rates, uh, stocking rates and forage value. Um, clogs waterways and interferes with the production of wild rice. So we worked on uh, the biocontrol of this plant and we introduced four biocontrol agents in the 1990s, but specifically two agents, uh, two leaf feeding beetles in the genus Galerocella and one root mining weevil were particularly effective, leading to over 90% reduction in plant density and a slow but persistent increase in the total native species diversity and abundance. And just a few pictures to illustrate that this is purple loose stripe at the site in Minnesota in 2000, before the release of these insects, only one year later, heavy defoliation of the plant, no more flowering, and two years later, come back of uh, some of the native vegetation. Now, this is a bit an example where it worked very well and very fast, and it doesn't always work that fast. It sometimes takes quite a long time, much longer than when you apply maybe a herbicide. In summary, um, the classical uh, control is practiced since over 100 years, resulting in many cross-cutting benefits for economic benefits, environmental benefits, uh, but also social benefits, benefits for animal and human health. Uh, it has an excellent safety record using the currently applied safety standards. More work is needed to improve and predict success, but cost-benefit ratios are positive to extremely high. And we believe that classical biocontrol could also contribute to achieving global targets. Um, as was said in the introductory uh, remarks, um, it can also uh, help uh, for, uh, to achieve targets of the European Green Deal, but also the, the global biodiversity framework target uh, six. Um, but as Martin already pointed out we also have some challenges and I believe one of the biggest challenges is, is really the <laughs> perception of um, biocontrol, of classical biocontrol as a, as a risky business. Um, and, uh, and also the regulations that are either very, very stringent um, or often not adapted to biocontrol or non-existent. Um, in a recent paper, um, in, a, in a recent paper it was shown that confidence in weed biocontrol as a method uh, strongly increased with the level of knowledge and expertise in weed biocontrol. Um, so also promoting successful biocontrol examples could be a good way and we uh, will hopefully contribute to this effect with this workshop. And I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.